affect us that we have to live online. So please don't let us amputate the digital limbs that our children have. Okay, I know that there's a difference between digitization and digitization and digitalization. Just quickly, digitization is the process of changing from analog to digital. So you talk about we digitize, just going from analog to digital. But digitalization, this is how we put our lives in it. We structure our lives around digital communication and structures. And we use a lot of technologies, the ICTs, information technology, we use a lot. So the digitalization is the processes that we engage ourselves in, in our community. So it's, it goes beyond moving from analog to digital. It's involving everything we do with ICTs. So that, that's this, this subtle difference between digitization and digitalization. Now, this OECS graph is simply showing how women, not just in Bayelsa State, all over the world, women are being disadvantaged. And just a look at the graph, you can see um, the advantages women have sometimes because they do have opportunities to go into digital thing, but also they are disadvantaged. So the blue shows the advantage that women have, but that orange bit shows the disadvantage that they have. And look how much that they are being disadvantaged. Lack of skills, for example, and cyberbullying, very much disadvantage. So this is an OECS um, record that we can all look at and just have a closer look in our spare time. We can really look at that. Um, everyone knows about this one, the pay issue. Some work have equal pay, some work do not. And when we look at the balance here, we notice that women are still being underpaid. So there's a big, big difference. Very few occupations, very, very few, that give them that equal pay. Generally speaking, the gender gap in terms of pay is getting wider and wider and wider. So we need to do something to address that. When we look at gender digital path, we notice we look at the skills, the share of them in ICT. 92% of women and against 93%. So we see 63% against 73%. And this is because, as the next slide will show, that Eight out of 10 ICT jobs go to men. But this is an EU, an EU report that talks about by 2020, how many specialists will be lacking. And if eight out of 10 lacking and they have 500,000, that's a half a million specialists lacking in this 2020. So what we need to do, reinforce the pay gap and unchallenge gender stereotypes. So imagine out of 8 million ICT specialists in EU, 17% are women, just 17%. So the, the, the issue that we face is not necessarily by Elsa only. This is a worldwide issue. And, it, and again, continuing from what the EU report, self-confidence made a big, big difference. They thought that women were not attracted to digital jobs. They were less attracted to digital jobs. They also thought that there were shortage of women in professional, digital professional, and the work balance. And I'm sure that this is the same when we look across Bielsa and across Africa, that 
the digital jobs are more going to what the men are doing uh, rather than women. And this has implications for the digital divide because the, the lack of self-confidence is causing that divide to grow. When women don't go forward for digital jobs, the divide is growing. When women don't go forward for professional jobs, the divide is growing. So there's need for balance here. And again, we heard someone mention in the presentation about the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, there's a, again, a high demand for digital professionals when it comes to these STEM subjects. So again, for us to bridge that digital divide, for us to bridge that gender divide, we, we need to get more women in, involved. And I, I'm re really surprised at these statistics, 14% with almost no change over the, in STEM. And, and this is a worldwide picture that is painted here by the, the EU. This is an EU picture, 14% with no change over the last 10 years. So we see that it's really a serious issue to get more women involved in ICT and digitalization. Okay. Okay, so why is it, if STEM is so important, why is it that less women are going for STEM? It, it, it's really a good question to ask because we need STEM. We, we can see, especially now, when we need technologies to help us to move forward, we need more people get involved. Mainly, we have medical practitioners as being women, but when it comes to like other scientific activities, women do not get involved. So we need to start them as early as possible. And we need to make these STEM activities fun activities. We need to expose them to, to STEM as early as possible. Not just the, the boys, but also the girls. Expose everybody to STEM. And you would have heard from the presentation from the Drexel team yesterday, the importance of STEAM. And that is where you add arts to the STEM. We are not focusing on STEAM here, but what I'm saying that when you expose children, the students to STEM, you should also expose them to STEAM, where we add the arts into the sciences and the technologies and the engineering and the mathematics. Okay, here is a report that's coming directly from Nigeria. And this report is saying inequality of opportunity in Nigeria, inequality and poverty, rising income inequality hits women the hardest. Obstacles are facing women. Girls' education is a problem. Violence against women and girls is a problem. So this is a Nigerian report in 2012. Now in 2020, the same thing still exists. So that is why I'm, I'm happy that Dr. Rachel is looking into how she can help to address this issue. And Again, the report continues. Again, we have the rural element, 60 to 79% of women force is rural, but men are four, five times more likely to own land. Can you imagine that? Five times as many judges and permanent secretaries are women that, than men. This is the one in the House of Representatives on the far right bottom. Nigeria's House of Representatives has 360 members. And of those, only 25 women. I mean, perhaps we need to take a leaf from Rwanda's book. We are 67% of women uh, in the House. So we need to, you see the need to have the gender issues addressed at this point. There are all sorts of factors that prevent that. And as we see, um, Becoming mothers before 20, that was one of the part of the report as well. And the report has recommended these suggestions for them to complete primary and secondary school as a priority. 
Do you need to value women and girls? This is what the Nigerian report is saying. And you should allocate 10% of their budget to education. No, that's not enough. That's not enough. We heard this morning, Botswana allocated 28%. We need to try and hit that target. 10% is certainly not enough. And of course, teachers should always be rewarded. Now, this is the report that came from, the Niger from Nigeria 2012. So Dr. Rachel Dixon has decided to address this by starting a foundation. And I'm going to allow her now to tell you all about the foundation, what she's doing, what she has done, what she's doing, and what she intends to do. So over to you, Dr. Rachel Dixon. I want to say good afternoon to everybody. I'm Rachel Dixon presenting from Bayasa, Nigeria. Uh, I want to thank the conference organizers and every participant. I want to talk about the Friday Coinfa Foundation. The Friday Coinfa Foundation was founded in 2012, and it is about educating the Joe girl. Uh, I, I will limit this my study to Bayasa. When I took over as a governor's wife in 2012 in Bayasa, we found out that most of the job girls were not going to school. And there was this cultural issue that bounded most of our girls. It was, uh, it was assumed that taking a girl to school, sending her to school was a waste. And so if any family has a challenge, if any family has any problem, the girl has to be given out in marriage. And I encountered a situation where a mother had walked up to me, and with tears in her eyes, she had told me, you spoke to us that our daughters are heroes, our daughters are pictures. Yeah, I'm 40 years ago, I wanted to go to school. And whenever I step into the classroom, my dad will come to the class and ask the teacher to send me out. And this class I'm holding has been my companion for 40 years. I've been condemned to the life of being a farmer. But today, when I hear you speak to us about the future of our girls, that are our future, that are hope, I want my daughter to be educated. I don't want her to go through what I have seen. It's said in her eyes that Hawk and had said, I can give you a job. And today, as we speak, a doctor is a master degree holder. That is a power of vision. That is a power of empathy. I, young women, have embraced education. In 2012, uh, 230 women were sent for training. Today, as we speak, more than 500 girls are in our various universities in Bayelsa, the Niger Delta University, where I'm a lecturer, and the University of Africa, Tororua. 100 of them are girls. And in 2014, my husband sent 15, 15 students to Lincoln University in America. And the criteria was they were going to take a scholarship exam. And that day, I looked at my girls and I told them, you can make it if you dream it. And when the results came back, out of the 15, 10 were girls. And these girls said they had me say, go for it, you can make it. Today in Biosa, our girls are excelling. For back to back 2017, 2018, girls came top and best graduating in our medical school. Today in Biosa, we have produced two women that are in the National Assembly uh, uh, rep. Today in Biosa, we have four women that are in our assembly. Today in Bayelsa, we have surpassed the 35% affirmative action we are gaining, going for 45. I can say with the power of vision, I have told them, you can make it if you dream it. And we are seeing the results. But the only area where we are having slight challenge now is digitalization. Because most of them, when we send them to school, it's taking them time to know how to use their laptops. But we know they will get there. And also in Bayelsa, there is a law that says every child has a right to education. And we have pursued it to a logical conclusion. We have told women, your daughters cannot be on the street hawking. 
when it is time for them to go to school. And we are finny dog girl making us proud all around the globe. And we have said, for those that are willing to pursue their careers to a logical conclusion, the foundation is there standing behind them to make them succeed. And I can simply report that in Bayasa, our daughters are our heroes. They have made us proud. Our advocacy programs have been welcomed by all our sundry. We have seen the number of enrollment of girls in the secondary school to surpassing those of our boys. And today, we know that in the nearest future, every barrier that is holding our girls from being educated, from being empowered, from being professional that they want to be, will be broken. I've told the girls, wherever there is a glass ceiling, break that glass ceiling. Wherever there is a challenge, surmount that challenge. And you can only do that when you are educated. And with God helping us, that challenge has been taken care of in Bayelsa. We know that there are still some challenges to be taken care of, but we are happy with the progress we have made. Once more, I want to thank you all, and this is the progress report from the Friday Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Rachel. Um, no. Dr. Rachel, do, would, would you want to address this or you want me to talk about this one? Yeah, uh, uh, I've said we have, sponsored, we have sponsored 500 girls in Niger Delta University where I lecture, 100 girls in the University of Africa, Tororua, they are in uh, year three. We have vocational training programs for those who want to use their talents. We have trained people in catering. We have trained people in ICT. We have trained uh, people in uh, catering. We also have girls who have decided to pursue technical education, and they are also undergoing that training. And in 2017, the girls' enrollment in Bayelsa topped the boys. For the first time in our history as a state, the girls' enrollment in the state top the boys because now every mother, every father knows that their daughters are their assets. When you educate a girl, you educate four generations yet unborn. When you educate a girl, you are turning around the fortune of that society. When you educate a girl, you are talking about the social development of that state. Today in Bayelsa, our daughters are heroes and we are proud of them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, if Dr. Rachel continues with this, um, with the foundation doing these wonderful things, this is what's likely to happen. Women will be empowered. We will have a lot of productivity increase. Of course, sustainable development will be possible. And we know the MDC goals. The fifth one deals with gender. So what Dr. Rachel is doing, she's helping Bayelsa to meet the Millennium Development Goals by addressing that fifth goal. And we have educated communities, productive partnership, and most importantly, participating and contributing citizens. Every country needs that. Every state needs that. And if Bayelsa can do this, it would not stay. The benefits would not be only in Bayelsa. They would spread across Africa and across the region. Across